Hello again. I'd like to welcome you to my review of the Hornby 3284 TTS. Uh, this is Hornby's latest uh, version of the Flying Scotsman. Uh, this is in the railroad range and it comes with uh, digital TTS sound uh, pre-installed. So I've been reviewing this uh, in parallel with the Mallard uh, locomotive as well with TTS uh, also in the railroad range so this is one of two reviews uh, covering these two locomotives uh, very similar uh, in terms of specification and price and I think in terms of performance as well uh, but there are some differences and I'll, I'll, I'll call that out as I go through this review so I do have a separate review which goes through the Mallard uh, TTS locomotive uh, I'll put the link in description for that so you can you can check that one out if you're uh, looking at these and looking to maybe perhaps make a decision between uh, one or other or maybe you're going to looking at both of them um so i'm not uh, a, a huge collector on in terms of steam locomotives but both the mallard and the flying scotsman uh, have a long kind of history in the world of railways particularly in these islands uh, and hence i was interested uh, once i saw you know reasonable value versions of them available, uh, particularly with the sound capability uh, at, at a good price, uh, which, which these are. Uh, I was keen to actually try them out and, and uh, see them on the layout and actually get a look at them first hand as I've never had these locomotives in the past. So this review is going to break us, bring us through the, uh, uh, this particular uh, locomotive, the Flying Scotsman. Uh, it's one of a long line of Flying Scotsman in the Hornby range over many, many years. And as I say, this one sits in the, the railroad uh, bracket at the moment. It's, it's more the budget price version. Uh, I'm going to be looking at the TTS uh, sound version. There is a non-TTS sound version of this also available. I'll cover that a little bit later on, uh, which is uh, essentially an identical specification, but just doesn't have the sound uh, module installed. This one does have the sound module installed, and I would recommend this one uh, for any purchaser. Uh, I think, again, the cost difference is, is pretty small. Uh, between the two uh, and it's certainly less than the cost of the sound module and also just you know it gets over the whole um, hassle of having to to do an installation of a sound module into one of these uh, locos so without any further ado let's take a, a closer look at this guy and I'm keen to, to take a look at it and uh, and then we'll we'll go to the next stage of the review so just taking it out of the box um it comes in similar packaging to uh, the Mallard version, uh, slightly different, this is a flat top piece whereas the Mallard had a kind of a fitted uh, plastic top piece on it, so there's a slight difference there. Uh, and also the, the inner sheet here that's kind of protecting the loco in, in the um, styrofoam uh, kind of uh, casing here, uh, that's, that's kind of a, a stiff sort of plastic on it. Uh, I did prefer the version in the Mallard locomotive, I thought that was packed slightly better, I, I, that had a, a softer uh, more protective uh, kind of plastic sleeve on it, uh, whereas this one is a little bit harder and not giving the same kind of level of protection, I don't think. Um, there's a few other extra pieces in here. You can see there's a there's a, a little piece of soft foam in there uh, between the um, the tender and the actual locomotive, and that's, I think, really to protect it in, in, in transit, the, the two hitting off each other. Uh, and also there's a piece at the end here that I just notice here that's, again, providing a bit of extra protection. Uh, this box was probably designed for a slightly different locomotive, uh, so um, uh, the fit isn't exact, so they put an extra piece in there just to, to protect it. Um, this is a lower standard of uh, packaging relative to you know the, the normal Hornby locomotives, uh, which would be coming in the more ice cube type packaging, but I think it's perfectly adequate for a budget model like this, and uh, I think they have taken some extra steps uh, to fully protect uh, the model, uh, particularly in transit. Uh, if you're getting this through the post, uh, you'll, want, you'll want to be reassured by that. So I think this is perfectly adequate. It, it, it's, it's, not, it's not the best packaging in the world, but I think it's adequate for, for this level of model. So uh, I'm, I'm okay with that. Uh, also, the supply documentation is, again, to the equivalent standard, really to the equivalent standard of any Hornby locomotive, uh, the typical service sheet that you get uh, that talks about uh, maintenance, uh, talks a little bit about DCC installation if you don't have it pre-installed uh, so you can see some of the details there if you want to put if you're adding a DCC so if you did buy the non DCC version of this or the non TTS version I should say uh, then you would be following these instructions uh, to to install that uh, so nothing that's 
I mean, absolutely spot on. That's what we get with any any normal Hornby locomotive, be it railroad or otherwise. Uh, similarly, the the TTS uh, sound manual for this um, is again up to the normal standards that you'd get from any TTS locomotive from Hornby. And uh, I'm pleased with this, and it has all of the sort of information that you would typically want uh, in in such a sheet. Uh, and so you've got the. Uh, the main sheet here covering the, the various functions, uh, the DCC functions. Um, there's 18 in total, uh, or 19 actually, from F0 to F, F, F18. Uh, two of these are linked to lighting, which are not installed on this model, so they're not applicable. And the others cover the various sound functions uh, that's on here. Um, as, as again, as I kind of reiterate for these locomotives, I do like the fact that they give you the CV uh, addresses and, uh, and values, should you wish to customize uh, the DCC configuration of the locomotive and they also give you information if you did want to add a, uh, some sort of lighting capability uh, to the locomotive then there's information on how you would do that and uh, a pin out for example on the 8 pin connector and how you'd connect an LED. So this, uh, this is I think a um, good standard typical for all Hornby locomotives with sound and I'm pleased with it and it's um, it's as good as any in the industry uh, this level of documentation for uh, for this type of locomotive. Okay, so let's get this guy, uh, we'll break for two seconds, I'll take this out of the box and we'll take a, a closer look. Okay, see you in a minute. Okay, we've uh, got him out of the box now, so let's take a little bit of closer look at um, this version of the Flying Scotsman. Uh, I think overall it's um, it's it's a nice, uh, a nice looking livery, uh, a good looking paint job. Uh, when it comes to the level of detail, I suppose there is, uh, it is. This is not the equivalent detail that you'd see on some of the higher end locos. But you know, there's a nice railing there. There's an inset of some of the brass pieces on the top there. Um, the actual wheel assembly uh, is done is done well, and you've got the green in there on, on the on the main wheels. Uh, so quite quite nice looking. Um, there's no spring buffers either end, uh, which is probably not a surprise for a railroad model. Um, again, similar to the Mallard review, um, the main locomotive actually has a good weight level on it, um, uh, which is good, and I think that helps uh, in, in terms of the running performance as well. Uh, and again, the tender is a little bit on the light side, um, so that kind of gives takes from the feel a little bit uh, with the tender. Again, there is a, a wiring a wiring running between the tender and the main locomotive uh, for the the DCC control. Uh, so that's part of that. Uh, you'll probably see a little window frame in there, which is nice. So that's a nice detail to see in there. Uh, there isn't a lot of detail in the cab, however, and um, uh, the coal detail here is pretty... Uh, it's it's adequate, put it that way. Um, so, I mean, it, 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 is, uh, it is quite a nice looking locomotive. Um, uh, I think this isn't bad, this for, um, you know, what is essentially a budget offering. Uh, a comment I will make is that for relative to the diesels in the t in the uh, railroad range and i've had a few of these in the past all of which i've i've eventually got rid of because i was never happy with them i do believe that the mallard and the flying scotsman these two models they are a superior class of locomotive to some of the previous diesels uh, that would have uh, come from the railroad range even with tts installed in them uh, these are just a little bit better uh, i think they sit just below the kind of standard offerings um, so I think the fact that they're labeled under the the railroad uh, kind of banner and 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 uh, that, that's how they're sold uh, I still wouldn't be put off too much by that it does mean they are budget models there's no doubt about that but I think the quality level is good and um, these are nice looking locomotives uh, and I think as we'll see uh, later on I think that they, both this and the Mallard do run really well and um, and the, you know the sound uh, is also good. It's good to get that uh, sound capability out of the box. And this particular locomotive can be available at qu quite a reasonable uh, cost. I've seen these um, on sale below a hundred pounds. So uh, you're getting a, a, a nice locomotive with sound for less than a hundred pounds. I think that that's outstanding value if you if you can come across that. So this is a nice looking locomotive. I. Um, I, I'm perfectly happy with this. Um, you know, it's it, the, there's not a major compromise here um, for for me. I, I, this is uh, what I was happy with, and uh, this is what I paid for. So I'm very pleased with the level of value here. Um, 
just one little note there is a, a detailing kit um, so it's on the bottom of the box just there so and there's instructions as, as I indicated earlier on how to install that uh, in, in the in the user manual so uh, if you want to add that in that that's something you can add in but this is a nice looking model I'm looking forward to seeing this running uh, with uh, a rake of coaches behind it and see how it performs but uh, overall uh, initial impressions out of the box are very positive um, and, and I'm well pleased it may, it may have railroad on the box uh, but I think the quality level is is uh, above the norm for uh, railroad offerings uh, certainly I, I would say so and I think these two this and the Mallard uh, locomotives uh, for me definitely um, you know I think they, they probably are uh, certainly a level above the railroad uh, type brand if I put it that way and certainly if you're used to some of the previous railroad offerings as diesels um, uh, don't be put off these are better than those there certainly are there's a lot more weight in, in the engine there for example uh, I'm a lot happier with the overall finish so I think they are a step above uh, some of the other equivalent diesel uh, railroad models which albeit do sell for a cheaper price um, but I think these these are uh, a step above those okay so I think the next thing to do is to get this guy out on the tracks and let's see how she performs in real life let's see what this what she sounds like and uh, we'll, we'll take it from there okay talk to you in a minute Okay, we're all set to uh, go here. Uh, we'll just uh, go through a couple of the sound effects and then we'll get underway. I do have a separate video with a full run out of this uh, locomotive that steps through all of the sound effects. So I'll put the link in the description and you can take a look at that offline. So we'll get going here. We'll start her off pretty slowly and uh, we'll kind of build up the speed as we go. Uh, just to give you a feel for how this locomotive looks, performs and sounds at uh, different speed levels. The coaches I'm using today are Mark 1 Hornby coaches in the kind of chocolate and cream uh, uh, colour scheme which would be uh, pretty well aligned I think with the, uh, this, this locomotive and I'll put uh, details in the description of those particular coaches uh, if you're interested in them. Uh, I actually think they, they fit quite well here. There are other options of course you could look at uh, at an ER uh, coaches um, from Hornby or other vendors that would also fit in quite well here. So so far so good. Our performance is good and I did find this locomotive uh, overall a good runner when I was running it in. I uh, never had any issues over points, diamonds, etc. I'm a very good performer. Now you can run these under DC. Uh, you can configure um, the locomotive to run under, under DC. Uh, and it will do so. Uh, if that's all you have or if you uh, haven't upgraded yet to DCC. And this does run fine uh, under DC. We're running on a radius 3 curve here uh, for this run out. And the recommended radius is a radius 2 uh, but uh, you'll get away probably with the radius 1 but I wouldn't chance burning it at speed I think you'll probably run into some derailment um, at speed and this does go very fast so we will be speeding this up now to the top speed I'm going to go all the way to the top speed on this to give you a feel for what it's capable of so far so good uh, all looking well and we will start uh, speeding things up now whistle effects there. And this does have uh, a couple of nice whistles actually on it on this locomotive that I, I really like. Okay, we're just starting to uh, crank up the speed a bit more now. And we 
will go all the way to the maximum. As I said, a very smooth run, no problems, no derailments, no issues like that. No problem with pickup either. And we're just going to turn it all the way up now. So we're just going right up to top speed here. And she really is a flyer, uh, living up to her name. fast. Um, so that's it, we'll just start ramping her down now and we'll bring her home to a, a slow stop. But overall really impressive, uh, these locomotives, this and the, uh, the Mallard equivalent are uh, really great performers, they're great runners, uh, they perform well, uh, they don't have any problems on different track configurations, uh, they've got a speed in there and they're pretty good low speed uh, as well. So. All in all, very pleased. Nice one out. Okay, next up we're going to take a look at the uh, summary. So we've been reviewing the Hornby R3284 TTS Flying Scotsman. Uh, this comes from the Hornby Railroad range. Uh, it's a LNER A1 class locomotive and this particular model number has got the 4472. Uh, it's in a 462 wheel configuration. And it does come with a uh, factory installed uh, TTS digital sound. There's uh, 18 functions in total there, um, and a couple of them are, are taken up with uh, lighting, which is not used, and the rest are for sound. There is a non TTS version of this locomotive, uh, the R3086, uh, and uh, it's an equivalent locomotive basically, but without the TTS installed. It is, t it is uh, DCC ready, however. Uh, the extra features are thin on the ground, uh, there is a detailing kit uh, that can be added. And the retail selling price can vary quite a bit on this and you can see it on offer. Um, it's in the region of 99 to 136 pounds uh, sterling. And the, the non-TTS version tends to be just around about 20 pounds less than that. Uh, so that isn't a really big difference and uh, hence my advice to go for the full TTS version from, from day one. Okay, next up uh, we've got the scorecard. So performance, I'm giving this a four star. Um, more or less the same performance as the Mallard uh, TTS. And, um, you know, they're both uh, flyers, as I might call them. Um, great performers, uh, no issues at all uh, running. I, I only ran them with a five car rake, but uh, there seemed to be potential there to go much bigger. So uh, these are both powerful and fast locomotives. Uh, so very good there. Appearance is um, a little bit lower than the Mallard. I think there was just that little bit more detail on the Mallard um, and so I, I'm giving it a slightly slower, a smaller score, three and a half star uh, versus four star which I give for the Mallard. Uh, it is small and, and, and maybe it's a subjective thing but I just think there is a little bit of a difference there and the Mallard just is just a notch ahead of this. Albeit I do like the, the, the finish on this locomotive, I think it's very good, I think it's a, it's a nice paint job and I think overall a nice finish so um, there's very little really in that. Uh, the sound, three and a half star, again similar to the Mallard sound score. Uh, some very nice whistles in here um, and overall you know for a TTS locomotive very very good. Um, there are instances where full DCC sound you would love to have it. Uh, but again, you know, uh, you're going to pay a huge premium cost for that. So I'm I'm well satisfied uh, with this with uh, for, for for the price I paid here. Extra features are thin on the ground. As I said, there's just the detailing kit and really nothing else. Uh, packaging I've scored a little bit lower than the Mallard, as I indicated earlier on. I just slightly happier with the uh, the fitted plastic cover and the uh, the, the 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 more uh, softer sleeve that was there, which I believe gives better protection. Um, so it's a, sm a small difference there and overall I, I think the Mallard is ahead of this and I think that's kind of reflected in the price as well. Um, uh, Hornby do price and in general the, the Mallard uh, version of this tends to be priced higher than, than this particular model. So I think there there is a slight difference there but it is small and I think uh, some of it could come down to personal taste. I actually like both locomotives and uh, 
I count this one as really excellent value and definitely recommending going for the TTS version. So, you know, there's very little between them. Uh, I'm going to give you the edge to the Mallard in the in the two horse race between the two of them. But this is a very good locomotive, very pleased with it. And uh, to be honest, I have no qualms but recommending either one and, uh, and down to your personal preference. You know, you're going to enjoy uh, both of them. They're both great performers and a great value for money. Okay, so I hope you enjoyed the review today. I uh, hope it is, is of use to you and you can use it in your buying decisions in the future. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, just please hit the subscribe button and uh, I have lots of reviews to coming up, uh, both Irish and UK locomotives that I want to cover. I want to thank you for watching today's review and I hope uh, to see you on one of these reviews in the near future. And in the meantime, happy modeling.